Hi, my name's Katie and I'm an Improvement Specialist in the KPO team. So we're going to talk today about how to set up an improvement project using driver diagrams and a PDSA approach. So what is a driver diagram? Well, a driver diagram is a simple visual overview of your project, helps you break it down into small, manageable change ideas that are going to help you reach your aim. So here's an example of a driver diagram um, and a template. So you begin with setting an aim and then you move on to start thinking about what are the things you need to achieve that aim. And then you break that down further until you have a change idea that's manageable um, to help you achieve that aim. It's a really good visual display that everybody can connect with. So if you're needing some ideas for your driver diagram, a good way of doing this is using an affinity diagram. And this is an example of an affinity diagram. It's good to do, um, you can do it in person or virtually, um, have a big piece of paper and some small um, post-it notes. And everybody, it's a group exercise and everybody writes down in silence um, something that they associate with the problem that you're trying to solve um, or write down a, a problem. And then um, you theme these so everybody puts their problems onto the big piece of paper. And then in silence, you group them into themes. That will help you think of your um, primary drivers in relation to the aim that you have set. So I just want to touch quickly on measures as these can link to your driver diagrams. So there's three different types of measures when, when doing a um, improvement project. There's a process measure, an outcome measure and a balance measure. The outcome measure is linked directly to the aim. So if you are aiming to reduce falls, your outcome measure will be the number of falls. Um, so you might measure this over time. So the number of falls um, each week, and you know that the work that you are doing to try and reduce falls is working if you reduce the falls. A process measure is a um, measure of your test of change. So if one of your tests of change is to um, focus on education and you want to create an e-learning package um, and your test of change is to create the e-learning package and have a certain percentage of staff and um, complete the e-learning, your measure would be what percentage of staff have completed the e-learning package. So that would be your process measure. So it's linked directly to your test of change or your secondary driver. And a balance measure, just make sure that anything that you're doing within your project um, to make a change isn't having an impact somewhere else. So, for example, we've put coins here. If your um, e-learning package costs money, then does that balance outweigh any other, any other test of change that you could do? So it's making sure that you um, have a balance there and there isn't an impact somewhere else. So it's always good to have these three things when you're thinking about an improvement. So the first part of um, the driver diagram is setting an aim. So you need to make sure that your aim is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time based. So you've got a smart aim um, and remember that it links directly to your outcome measure. So don't get stuck on setting an aim. Um, make sure it's relevant. Make sure um, everybody's on the same page about the aim. Um, and that you you think of it as a in, in a group um, and make sure that you think about all of those things to keep it smart. Remember to aim high and stretch yourself. So um, don't try and make a small improvement. Try to stretch yourself because any improvement within that aim um, is a good improvement. So if you stretch yourself, you might find that you can go that little bit further. So here's an example of a good aim statement. So to reduce the number of developed pressure ulcers trust-wide by 35% in 12 months. So here we're being quite clear about what we're aiming to do. We're saying where, we're, where the focus is. So we're talking about doing this trust-wide, not just on a particular ward. Um, and we want to do it by 35% in 12 months. So that's a good stretch. But also remember, when doing an improvement project, it's always good to start small. So perhaps in your case, you might want to think about if you were looking at reducing the number of developed pressure ulcers to do it in a smaller area and then you can scale it up from there. But this is for a, a large trust wide collaborative project. So um, but but make sure you aim high. We could have set it at 15 percent, but would that have stretched us enough? And we may not meet 35 percent, 
but if we reduce pressure ulcers by 30 percent that's a huge achievement so um, remember to aim high so the next part of your driver diagram to fill in is the primary drivers so this is what you need to do to meet your aim so if we're trying to reduce the number of developed pressure ulcers we know that knowledge and education around pressure ulcers is key to reducing them so that is our high level um next step to reducing pressure ulcers which we can then break down into our secondary drivers so we can start thinking about then what do we need to do to deliver on that so if you pause here and just have a think about a couple of um primary drivers that might be relevant to your project and and fill them in so hopefully you have some primary drivers in mind now so from there you want to start thinking about your secondary drivers so this is breaking things down a little bit further and these are the ones that are going to start linking into your change ideas but also to your process measures so what do you think you need to do to make that secondary driver work so if you need you know you need education and knowledge what is it that you need to do to deliver that so here we've got we could do some learning bursts we could do a visual information sheet earlier we said about the e-learning package so you might have lots of ideas again make as many secondary drivers for that primary drivers as you think you need um, and this is going to lead you towards what your change idea is going to be so some people just stop at secondary drivers and they have enough to know what their change idea is going to be some people then add in a change idea so if you just pause there and have a think about what your secondary drivers might be so this is the exciting bit, thinking about your change ideas. Hopefully your driver diagram is starting to develop now. You're starting to get some ideas of what um, you need to do to, to change. You might want to do a brainstorm at this point with the team and say, this is where we're up to. What do you think we should do to meet these, these drivers? So how are we going to create a learning burst or a visual information sheet? Who's going to do it? And that'll be where it comes into your change, change idea. So, a learning burst doesn't just happen so what do we need to make that happen we need to create some content and then deliver it to so many people and that's going to help you start thinking about what your process measure is going to be how many people are you going to deliver it to and how are you going to measure that that's happening who's going to deliver it start thinking more specifically about what that change idea is so hopefully you've got some tests of change to um go and have a go with um, it's really important that you spread these out so that when you're measuring your outcome from your aim, so if we're talking here about falls or pressure ulcers, the number of falls or pressure ulcers, um, we want to know that anything that we're doing um, to try and improve that is actually taking effect. So if we do all our change ideas at the same time, how do we know which one's worked? And we don't want to be doing things that aren't working, so we want to take a PDSA approach a plan do study act so you get a small test of change you you've done your planning with your driver diagram you go and do your test of change you have a look at your data from your outcome measure and your process measure and you see whether it's worked you give it a little bit of time if it's not worked why didn't it work <clears throat> you have a think about it and you refine it and have another go um, if it did work, move on to your next small test of change and hopefully these things will start chipping away at your um, original aim of whatever you are trying to improve. So those little bits um, um small tests of change aren't having a big impact on anybody. Um, they shouldn't be too hard to do. And hopefully if it works, you'll be able to scale it up and make it bigger um, and other people can um, benefit from your learning as well. So here's an example of a driver diagram um, for pressure ulcers, so a completed one. There's lots of different ideas there. You can see here I've made um, a couple of bits red because that for me really needed to um, happen sooner rather than later for the rest of the work to, to happen. So there's no um, hard and fast rule about how you do this. Use different colours that mean something to you. Um, I was going to take this to the group and ask them to um, develop their own change ideas because this was a large trust wide collaborative. So um, that might be taken differently in different areas. So it's easier for people to do tests of change that they think um, are useful in their area.
so it give, gave them a bit of flexibility but if you're working on a smaller scale project um get people involved and and take any approach you like but that's an example of a completed one it doesn't have to be set in stone you can change your aim you can change your primary drivers you can change your secondary drivers if you need to and probably recommend you keep reviewing it and see where you're up to but it's a really good vis visual roadmap really of where your um improvement project is going for people to connect with so remember when you are creating your driver diagram it's really important to go see ask why and show respect so make it a team approach and make sure everybody's involved in the making of the driver diagram so that you've got a good engagement so hopefully you've got a driver diagram that you can um, take away and use now um, but if you would like to get in contact for any coaching sessions the qi network um, on the email address there and kpo can provide coaching um, we'd love to have a look at your driver diagrams and um, always happy to help out we, we we love to hear about your improvement projects um, there's also the leads improvement method um, intranet page and we have a kpo youtube channel with lots of videos on there of um, improvement work and a um, Twitter handle that you can follow us on at KPO Leads. So please stay in contact with us and be really interested to hear more about your projects. We really appreciate any feedback. Um, if you could scan the QR code and just answer a couple of questions, it doesn't take long and um, it helps us PDSA um, our training delivery and it's really useful for us in creating um, new content and um, keeping the current content relevant and useful. So any feedback is very much appreciated and um, anonymous. Thanks so much. Looking forward to seeing your projects um, up and running. Um, and please get in contact if there's anything that we can help with.